that 400 congressional staff members are calling on House leaders to categorically reject the incendiary rhetoric coming from inside the Republican Party. Now, this comes after those comments, uh, those Islamophobic comments by Republican Congresswoman Lauren Boebert, the representative from Colorado last month suggesting that Representative Ilhan Omar was mistaken for a terrorist inside the Capitol. Omar called the comments bigotry. They were lies, let alone bigotry, but they were lies and they were bigoted. Boebert refused to apologize to Omar directly, instead tweeting that she was sorry to anyone in the Muslim community I offended. Now, it is far from an isolated incident when it comes to actions not worthy of the office held by a number of our members of Congress. Just take, for example, Representatives Paul Gosar and Marjorie Taylor Greene both rebuked for unacceptable actions towards colleagues in recent months. Something has to change. This behavior is nothing short of unacceptable. Our members of Congress shouldn't have to feel unsafe because of their religion. That is not American. So how do we stop this reprehensible behavior? Joining me now is James Zogby, president of the Arab American Institute. James, it's good to see you. Thank you so much for joining us. So first off, you know, just how unprecedented is this behavior that we're seeing on Capitol Hill, that you have uh, these members of Congress attacking others in some cases, outright lies, as we saw in the case of Lauren Boebert, and others calling or creating uh, animes depicting the deaths of Congresswomen like AOC and anti-Semitic comments by others like Marjorie Taylor Greene and Stephen King and many more. Yeah, unfortunately, I mean, it's not unprecedented. I think back to Congresswoman Sue Myrick wrote in, uh, writing an introduction to a book called The, the Muslim Mafia, all about how there was a a plot on the part of Muslim staffers to Islamize America, and she singled out the Muslim staffers uh, on the Hill. Then there was Michelle Bachman's uh, uh, total uh, fabrication of Muslim Brotherhood roots for Huma Abedin. Um, and I could go on and on. I mean, Newt Gingrich uh, starting the, the, the campaign against uh, the, the Victory Mosque in New York, which the the GOP, the, the NRCC, the Republican Committee, uh, did paid television ads in 17 districts on this issue. Lauren Boebert is simply picking the fruit of a cancerous, diseased tree that was planted by the GOP two decades ago. And they have been cultivating this, and they have been working it, and they've, they've now exploiting it. Um, she wouldn't have told that lie for that laugh if she had not known that there was an audience there ready to receive it, and that's because They've worked real hard to, to create this disease. So, yeah, removing her from committees is one thing, but we got to root out the disease. The GOP really has a, an, a, an Islamophobic problem. They have a problem uh, with bigotry uh, and xenophobia, and, and it's, it's, it's a problem. We saw Donald Trump. Yeah. Donald Trump was the recipient of it. He fed it, but he also played into a crowd that was already there for him. So, James, talk to me a little bit about, because you, you're, you have such institutional knowledge of Washington, D.C., Muslim staffers don't have the same protections as many other members of staff. Why isn't there, for example, like a Muslim association of staffers? I mean, there's been a perception from those I've spoken to that it wouldn't be widely uh, accepted because it would draw attention to them, as you mentioned there, citing the, the preface in that book. If they were to create an organization with their main identifier, uh, what would that be for them? What would that experience be like for them on Capitol Hill? Staffers, staffers generally don't have protections. I mean, Congress holds itself to a different standard. Uh, you now can be uh, prosecuted for sexual harassment, but for bigotry, no. I mean, that's that's simply not there. There is no HR office on the Hill. Yeah. You have to rely on the leadership to do this stuff. Muslim staffers had an organization. That was precisely what, uh, what Sue Myrick was going after in 2009. Um, and they... Yeah, now have other associates with the MENA group that's been formed. But you're right. I mean, there is a fear that if you identify yourself, you put a bullseye on your back, and that's a problem. There are, for example, Republican Muslim staffers who are gun shy about being public about being Muslim. That's wrong. I know it's the same problem with Arab Americans. I mean, you know, uh, President Biden appoints three Arab Americans to national security posts, and oh my God, yeah. the hell that was raised. Um, and it was, you know, and, and it simply. It's true. We are the safe targets at this point. I mean, you can't do it with, 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 and you shouldn't do it with any other group, any other religious group, any other racial or ethnic group. You get away with it with, with, uh, with my community and with the Muslim community, and it's, it's wrong. I, I, 
Pelosi has to act. Democrats have to put an end to this crap, say, this is unacceptable. But at the same time, the Republicans got to do some soul searching, and we got to help them with that soul searching. I mean, the only Republicans I can recall who, who did any, John McCain was, I remember calling him up when, when, uh, when Huma Abedin was attacked, and he came right out and, and denounced it. Mitch Romney was the only Republican on the stage in 2012 who, when asked, would you appoint a Muslim uh, to a post, every other one said no or yeah. I would require an additional loyalty. Oath. Romney was the only one to not do it. They've got to deal with their problem in their party, and we've got to help them and making them have to pay a price for the bigotry. Let me ask you about that really quickly, because what do you make of the fact that it's up to Democrats to demand accountability? Why isn't it, um, I mean, you touched on why it's not coming from within the Republican Party, that they have an issue and Democrats need to help them. But we know that after Trump was elected, there was a spike in anti-Muslim American hate crimes. Uh, we're seeing all kinds of spikes in hate crimes generally. Do you think Republicans here use this in a way to appeal to their voters, that th this yeah. sense of nationalism resonates with their voters, as we saw from that, you know, laugh when Lauren Boebert lied in telling that, you know, Islamophobic story, that lie that she perpetuated to her in that fundraising event, I believe. An interesting thing happened, and we've been polling on this for decades now, uh, and up until October 2002, a year after 9-11, the numbers were still even. Uh, Muslims got a, a, a pretty favorable response, much more so than, than later. The Republicans started, like I said, a campaign. They used uh, really bigoted uh, experts. And unfortunately, you all in networks hired some of them as commentators. People were asking the question, who are these people and who did you call? You called some of the Islamophobic mm. bigots to come up and do it. Um, the, the Republican Party did it and exploited it. And, um, and then you had religious right doing it. And then when Obama ran, the thing exploded, and they said, oh, my God, they tried to other him yeah. by Muslim him, Arab him, foreign him. And when they saw that it resonated, they ran with it. Uh, how you and deal with it, yeah. I think that they have to pay a price. And the price has to be they have to be shamed and punished for what they've done. James Zogby, always a pleasure. It's great to see you and uh, always learn so much from your knowledge about uh, D.C. and everything. Thank you so much for staying with us, James. Thank you so much. All right, we are continuing to follow the breaking news.